get this meeting underway. So this is uh, the January 25th uh, Conway Select Board meeting at 6.02 p.m. via Zoom. And all of these, as usual, all these meetings are viewable over the FCAT media channel on YouTube. So if you go there, you will see, you can watch, see all of our meetings. Uh, so minutes, minutes of the last meeting. I never saw them. I never saw them when I saw yeah. them. I didn't I Yes. Uh, sorry, we, we have not yet had time to get those out to you. Sometimes we get behind when the when the meetings go weekly. Okay, so let's let's table the minutes until next week. Uh, this was a funny week with the MMA conference right in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, how about meetings attended by select board members? And Erica, you usually kick this off. Well, I, I, it wasn't technically a meeting, but I was at the MMA conference, um, the online conference. It was like totally weird experience, but <laughs> as as first introduction to like a conference like that. Um, so I did attend that. Uh, you know, I, I didn't really have any major takeaways that I could share, um, but it was really, um, it was a really interesting and uh, enlightening experience for me. Yeah. Great. Did, did you go to, there were some sessions for like new select select board members and things like that. I don't know what they Yeah. Were and there was one particularly for like, you know, women in leadership roles. I mean, I think yeah, I, yeah. if there was like one big takeaway, I think it was really um, like, a, for me, I guess, sort of like a profound appreciation for just um, governance in general. You know, I mean, when we think about like politics and governance and governing and, you know, like particularly now, like it's more like, you know, national and global context, um, it kind of like hit home to me that like it's, you know, it's not just like a soundbite or a tweet. It's like it's real work that people do. And I have like a very profound appreciation for people who've been doing this for, a bit, for much longer than I have. And um, cool. yeah. Great. How about you, Phil? I don't have anything profound or interesting like that. I wish that, that was such a, a good lesson to learn. Uh, let's see, I had a, um, I had, I went to the, uh, the plan, I, I did the planning board meeting on the um, overlay, the, the river, the river overlay district. Um, in which in which I uh, uh, unfortunately caused the group to veer off considerably into dam territory, into Ashfield Lake dam territory, which, as you know, is uh, a favorite horse of mine to beat. And um, but, you know, th there's. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so some of the proposals were, were kind of interesting, but everything is still, you know, have, see, see what the final product is that's tur that turned out. But they, they, they were definitely they, they were more or less just interested in of the people that showed up. And it was a lot of people, I guess, 20 something, 30 something, maybe. I don't know. 30 something. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, the, the the sense of everybody that they wanted the, the, the planning board to keep going at least and see what, ha you know, to, rather than just cut it, you know, stop right now. It was the, it was the definite sense of the people in that meeting to carry on and see what happens. So. Um, see what product they come up with, but I, I was interested in just that the the, the you know the, the the overlay district that they it, it corresponds perfectly with the historical flooding that took place following the collapse of dams further upstream from us in 1868 and 1938. And basically, everywhere in that river overlay district, exactly where all of the uh, every home in the, in that was swept off its foundation. Every bridge was wiped out, etc. So, which immediately struck, you know, spurred in my mind. Well, rather than worrying about the effects of flooding, let's try more harder to prevent the flood. Um, but uh, my, lo I don't, I don't know how many people I convinced with my logic. But um, yeah, so uh, that was Thursday. Um, Friday was uh, the, another board of uh, Deerfield Board of Health uh, Frontier School Committee uh, thing on w winter sports, which are going forward. The numbers, even though Sunderland recently transitioned to red, Deerfield might 
blip into that next week. Those were the, 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 the numbers that were reported in the paper were 14 day averages and the actual numbers of cases that were resolved already are much are most of that. And, and they're real confident that it's out of the school and not in the schools and they're ca we're carrying on. Um, so the, you know, the, we're, we're in, we're doing the hybrid role. All the schools are doing four days, more or less four days instruction in person. Um, so we're lucky in that regard. We really are. And uh, yeah, so that, that was Thursday and Friday. So I, ho I hope we're lucky. You know, the news this week in general about COVID was one bad announcement after another. Uh, yeah. The, I mean, the, the new South African strain sounds like it's more deadly than the other strains. And Yeah, I mean, that's one way, you know, the other way, uh, my favorite statistic is what Carl told us last week that we're the second, the, the ratio of cases to population, we're the second lowest in the state, 351 towns, which is pretty remarkable. And, and we're as high as we've ever been though, so. <laughs> right, right. But you know, I, I see people wearing masks more now than I ever have before. So I think we're doing good. And as good pitching, as we're double masks now. It's, you know, all of that is all bad news, but. Yeah. And, yeah. and there, no one's getting vaccinated. So. No, no, so some are in our community. It's starting. People are all of our fire. You know, the, our firemen did. That's really the, great. The EMS that, and um, um, most of our health care providers have now. Most of the nursing staff has. And uh, it's starting to trickle in when when I'm in meetings and people are saying, yeah, I got that, you know, whatever. I feel I feel invincible, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so. they're not vaccinating select board members yet. That's what I know. No, we are emphatically at the end of the line. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went to the MMA conference too. And uh, Eric, I'm thrilled that you went. Um, it, it was very bizarre because it's the first time they've ever had a virtual one through Zoom. And, uh, and it went off fairly well. It wasn't, it wasn't effortless. And uh, what I found- It was weird. It, it was weird, it was. Um, Almost every one of the speakers spoke about either uh, equity or racial justice or climate change. Those are the three very hot topics among the workshops. Um, there was one workshop on uh, that Tom might have learned more about. It was it was a up, an update in municipal um, you know law and. But man, I went and if you weren't a lawyer, you wouldn't have known what anyone talked about. But uh, uh, I'm so thankful we do have a lawyer. But, but I was surprised at um, every speaker there was a person of color. And I hardly can remember a person of color at previous MMA workshops. And I, I mean, it may, that may be the times, you know, I mean, there's, it's, you know, since George Floyd and since what all is going on but it was it was noticeably different at, at, among all of the talks that were there the speakers that were there the what the workshops were about uh, they had a workshop specifically on how to how to talk to your police about their racial biases and mm -hmm. they've, they've never had a workshop like that before so, anyway. yeah i guess never had attended um, the MMA before and also coming from high red where I like, like that wasn't, I, I didn't really pick up on that at all because that's been sort of a trend in higher ed. I feel like over the past, you know, several years and I worked in higher ed for, you know, the past 20 years. Um, so that's, that's interesting that you would, um, but it, and I think it's a good trend, you know, but it, it's just interesting to me that that would be, um, I guess I just, you know, come from a different perspective where that's, you know, every other professional workshop I ever attend, it's sort of, you know, that, that's the norm. In, you know, diversity, the past, equity, inclusion, climate change. I mean, those are, you know, that's pretty much um, standard, I guess. There always was one climate change one. So that was common, but, and it was, it was okay. But before all of the workshops would be on, you know, how to get your people that work in your town enthusiastic, and they would have a guy who led a team climbing, you know, K2 or something like that. And, and uh, <laughs> talking, talking about strategies for, for being a good leader. 
and, and uh-huh. there's not, nothing like that. Now it was about you know your your implicit biases, uh, and and I also just couldn't help but wonder how those the speakers how different they would have felt standing in front of almost an exclusively all white old men audience, you know, which are, which are what all of the yeah, all the so, so MMA conferences always are. So. And, you know, what, Bob, would I just like to interpose here that, you know, the re- members of representative government in a democracy, like, reflect their population. And, and for one of the reasons why our population is uh, so homogeneous in so many of our um, uh, hill towns, and, uh, you know, is because of the official redlining that took place up until the 60s, where, FA, you know, you couldn't get I mean, people of color could not get mortgages mm. to move into our town or many, many other towns in this area. And so, you know, it's not it's not an accident that 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 we look like the way we look like. And so, you know, t- to me, this is just sort of the long swing of uh, history sort of beginning to not beginning, but, you know, progressing forward to, you know, it's, it's good. It's good that there's that that people in government are more reflective of the communities and the, that they represent. It's good. That's a good thing. No, I, I'm thrilled. I mean, the MMA is, uh, I view it as a somewhat conservative, but, you know, really an excellent organization and it has the ear of the governor and the fact that they are, you know, promoting good things, I think is really wonderful. Okay. But- but still, like every other statewide uh, ind- uh, organization that advocates on our behalf, they have been essentially captivated by the more populous part of the state. And they often advocate policies such as the Chapter 70 funding mechanism that floats all boats equally instead of gives to thus to us that are in far greater need. So yeah. all of the housing initiatives, we don't qualify. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so those are our meetings. It, it, it's wonderful to talk to you guys once a week. We never, I never get to see you. So anyway, uh, uh, public comments. Who we have? We have uh, uh, very few public here from the public, but uh, Kat, we'll get we'll get to you eventually. But uh, so old business. Um, the direct local technical assistant priorities list. Uh, Tom, I have not filled mine out. I do have it printed out, um, but that was as far as it got, I admit. Uh, I looked at it. I did not um, fill it out. Yeah. I, um, I, 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 we should be filling it out, and we should be getting them down to Tom, either that or we could scan them in and send them to Tom. Or... And I'll note that there's a request from the uh, FERCOG to include there. There is a COVID item there, and if we request, if the towns request DLTA funding for COVID funding, then the FERCOG can use that to offset what they're charging us under the agreements that we've all signed with them to uh, help out with the with the regional response. So um, that's wonderful. I want to do that. I want to do that. So we should make we should all make that our number one, I guess. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now now we only have to find two more. So, well, you you can check off you you can and should check off as many as you like, and and then um, you know I'll I'll send in everything, but you know also with the top three noted. Yeah. So when, you want them this week, though? You want them right away? I can't remember the due date. Yeah, they're um, they're due. Uh, I think next week, but um, the sooner the better. You okay. know. So if you you want to be heard, get it to Tom. So new business. Um, so the first item on the new business was approving our Comcast cable license and. And we did, I did. We got a note from Bill Solomon, who was on a few weeks ago, to talk about the license. He did get some a response back from Eileen with a lot of changes to the license that he sent to her. And he has read through it a bit, but he hasn't finished 
reading through all of the things Eileen wants to change. So it's going to be a little while until all that gets hashed out, but it's good. We had our congratulatory phone call with Eileen too soon. <laughs> well, I think that spurred her into getting those changes to us. So that was good. 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 But it's not done. And, be, and before we come to the board, I want the, the committee that, you know, the cable committee to look it over and still. So. Uh, so we do have a contract for the town nurses uh, that we need to approve. Yeah, I'd like to say that they that we that's a tremendous value for our town. It would cost us multiples of that number to uh, duplicate those services on our own. And uh, and and they're doing a, a, a really good job this year. I, they really deserve special pat on the back this year because they're the, the workload this year in this past year has been off the charts and they've really stepped yeah. up. They've really stepped up and I'm, I'm, I've been impressed. So the only thing I do have a question for Tom, I don't know if, if you've seen that agreement that they sent out Tom, because I know that they're really good about sending out like things like financial statements and we know what we spend and, and all that, but the agreement itself, it, it, it talks like they're only going to send things out periodically, whatever. And um, it, it, it and I just wonder, you know, what the, I always thought sort of agreements should reflect what their actual practice is. But when it when they're the, the, the clause that, that talked about their financial uh, uh, commitment um, and it just says we, we promise to send out periodic reports. And I, that's what I tell people when I don't want to do anything and reserve the right to do it once every 10 years. You know, so I, I, I don't I don't. I don't really know about the, the, that word choice because in reality, they're much more responsible than that clause would indicate. So I, I don't know. Did you see that? You... I, I think they're just leaving themselves some flexibility. Um, obviously, a, as you say, um, their workload has been tremendous this past year. And um, I think they don't want to um, back themselves into a corner, box themselves into a corner by promising something that, that they end up not being able to deliver. So I, I do look forward to, you know, um, uh, timely reports for what they're doing. And, and we, we do um, uh, usually, you know, in a non-pandemic year, um, there, there are regular reports that they send out. There's a monthly newsletter, for example. Um, but we haven't been getting those this year, and we know why. You know, they don't have time to put a newsletter together. So um, I think that's pretty much what they're referring to. I, I had a question that, you know, maybe a, a local lawyer here might be able to help me understand. But, but um, th there was a section on indemnification and insurance. And it said the town shall indemnify the FERCOG, then blah, blah, blah. And then it said FERCOG shall indemnify the town. And I, I was just wondering what that means when we each indemnify each other. Do you know, it's like, Phil or Tom? Yeah, it's, it's like in the NFL when it, you, you, have, you, you do the play over again. That was a joke. That was a, what? <laughs> that was a joke. Wait. Sorry. They um, did that. I mean, you're referring to the game left yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's offsetting penalty. Offsetting, offsetting penalties. Penalty. Yeah, the, the the play is replayed. Um, no, it, it it it. But it does sort of cancel each other out. And the the key thing in that clause was that last sentence that says you still have all the rights that the law would say you have otherwise. So that was just like fluffery. Um, but what does it mean to indemnify somebody? Um, that means that. You you pay for for their defenses if the, you know it, you you pay any money judgment um, that that's entered as a result of your uh, agreement or you know your conduct. It's it's, it's said like the, resulting from. So I mean, what, but that's really meant that uh -huh. if the fur, you know if the Furcock nurse trips and falls coming into town Conway Town Hall, then um, then we would. Uh, you know, and, and, and sues us, then we would pay a money judgment. I mean, and, and vice versa. But the reality is that we would be doing, they would do that anyway. So that's really, 
didn't mean anything. So it means if we're responsible for something, we have to pay the bill and we can't expect for a cog to pay it. And if they're responsible for something, they pay and we, we are indemnified. We are, yes. Uh, we, yes. we, we, we are not going to have to pay. Okay. That that's, makes sense. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. But, Great. Um, yeah. But you know, but one of the things is that if you take an agreement like that to a lawyer and you say, could you look it over? And, but if, if they want to send a, 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 any kind of bill, they have to add stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure this yeah. is exactly like the one that we, you know, that we signed three years ago. So here's a little tweet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> I, well, that was like nine thousand dollars a year or something like that, and it's it's a, it's it's the, it's the true Furcog bargain of all yeah, our services. It is really. I've been in town hall when the on the what is it the first Friday of the month I think when when the town nurse comes in and, and that the, the real crazy thing is that there are so many towns that aren't part of this in our county. This is just like I I don't know um, yeah. But. So I'm going to make a motion that we sign the. Uh, uh, the FERCOG Town Nursing Services Agreement. Yeah. I will that. So everybody in favor of that will we'll, uh, all say aye. Yep. Aye. So aye, too. Favor. Okay. So that's passed. And that's, that's here ready for you to sign, Bob. That's a one signature document. So you can come in okay. and sign that uh, anytime. Speaking of signatures, don't forget to come in, you know, at the end of these meetings, sometime early in the yeah. week, if you can and sign especially the warrants now there's no warrants this week but but I, I i'm not sure all the warrants are always getting signed at least by all three of us i'm sure that tom would be phoning no, us I, I feel like tom does a good job of reminding us if we don't good. come down good. to sign the warrants so i appreciate okay. that tom so, so i'm 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 taking my opportunity right now but uh okay we have a job description for the building and grounds maintenance tech uh you want to talk to that, Tom? Yeah, this is uh, the position that was discussed when Ron came in. Uh, our custodian is planning to retire in September, and that's when this, this position would come into play. Uh, of course, it still has to be approved by, you know, the Select Board and Finance Committee and town meeting uh, before it's funded, uh, but this is the job description that would be funded. And we had this gone over by the personnel committee uh, based on a similar town, uh, Northfield, to ours um, in terms of the what we need done. And, uh, you know, the, the committee made a few tweaks, fixed some typos, and, and uh, we came up with this. The, the one thing that's not complete that doesn't really have to be complete is that, that we haven't assigned a, a class to this. We came up with a classification system uh, that's meant to be tied to a compensation system, but the select board at the time did not approve the compensation system. So uh, it's a little irrelevant at this point to um, to uh, have a uh, have a classification. We can we can do that uh, whenever we need to. If there's a uh, if we do end up with a compensation system, um, but uh, I'm, I just mentioned that is uh, I don't think it's a reason to. Uh, to hold up approving the job description. Uh, this does, um, uh, you know, uh, Ron and I have been over it several times and the committee went over it, uh, looked at it thoroughly and went through and uh, it's very much in line with all of our other job descriptions. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, the personnel committee and I uh, and Ron recommend uh, approving the job description. Yeah, I really, you know, this is a formerly benefited position that's being upgraded to full time. And, so, but I like the idea that yeah, that, somebody that's with, the you know, intent. There will be somebody with the skills to, you know, to do the building maintenance that we're now expecting Ron to do. That's so, what we're hoping. Tom, who is the primary draftsman of this? Uh, Don Jacobs. Of uh, he was the person who did the wholesale revision of Conway's job descriptions and uh, and its classification and compensation plan. They're all linked together, um, and it's put together so that the the items in the job description are easily matched up with uh, 
points for the classification system, which move into the compensation part that the select board didn't end up approving. So it, it, it's part of a whole system, but um, only, only part of it got approved. Got it. I, I thought it was so. You just please, please uh, pass along my compliments to the draftsman. It was very well written. So. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, I, I will. He, he's, he's a talkative fellow, and he calls up every once in a while. So I'll be sure to tell him if he calls again. Good. Good. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve uh, the job description for the building and grounds maintenance technician. And get a second. Second. I'll second. Everybody say aye. Yes. Aye. Any, any nays? Don't hear any. So pass. And then, uh, so I believe Tom did not invite Joan Haley in to the meeting today, assuming that we all know Joan. Um, maybe that's not true, but I think that's probably true. Uh, uh, she's being appointed to the Cultural Council. I vote that we um, accept Joan Haley <laughs> to the Cultural Council. Yeah. I think no one more qualified than Joan to serve that, in that capacity. The Cultural Council is, a bit, is about to get more culture. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that is for a term ending June 30th, 2024. Uh, this is a standing committee, which here we have a, as three-year terms. The, the ad hoc committees that we set up for particular purposes are just one-year terms. But I thought that a good um, policy for, for the, the longer-term positions is that if it's after January of a particular year, sometimes we only appoint to the end of that particular year. Um, uh, especially for the one-year terms. But since this is a three-year term, I thought that she could be appointed for a term ending June 30th, 2024. So it would really be more of a three-and-a-half-year term. Yeah, it's fine. It's Joan. Love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, heard, we, I heard, we heard a motion, and I'll second it if nobody else did. Yes. And all in favor? Yes. Any, any nays? I hear no nays. So, so, Tom, tell Joan thank you very, very much. I can't wait. And you can sign her appointment form when you come in as well. Great. So now it's time for the joint meeting with the Finance Committee. So, who all is here? Do we have a quorum? Alan and Steve. Uh, not yet. Rihanna should be joining us, and so, so should Roy. Well, I see Jan here, and oh. well, Roy's here, so we have a quorum. Roy's here. There's Hi. a quorum. Okay. Howdy, gang. So, Tom, did you want to start with a general update? Uh, I don't have one this time. I expect no, no, at some I, point. Uh, I don't I'm think gonna... your administrator updates, but you often have general updates under the finance committee section. So. Yeah. No. That 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 that's what I'm referring to. I, right. I I'll I'll just say that I have started working on the Excel sheet. Um, making some assumptions, but it doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense to um, to start sharing that until some of the numbers are a little bit firmer. Okay. So oh, and, and I'll also mention that um, the technical school was originally scheduled to come in tonight, uh, but their numbers are not ready, uh, so we will um, we'll be hearing from them next week. So the, does everybody have a copy of the budget, Tom? Do you want to put up a, a budget sheet on your shared screen? Uh, shall we do the newsletter committee first? That was the first one you in our list, yeah? Yeah, since Kat's here. Kat's yep. here, yeah. Hi, everyone. 
Hey. So can you see, do you have a copy of the budget? Do you, Chat, do you, do you, can you see it on the screen? Is, is that? Okay, yeah. it is on the screen, good. That mm -hmm. looks like what we were, um, what we've used so far. I, I can see it. I think at this point, it's been about $3,600 um, that we've used. Um, From the FY20 budget? I I am not as familiar with how this part works because I uh, am the chair, but the um, the budget that um, Veronique works on and works with Louise on some of the numbers I'm not 100% sure on, um, but I know that we have used about 3,600 of what was what we were given that. Um, when we initially started uh, running the newsletter. We've done 10 issues so far. And we have, in those 10 issues, we have given the town uh, information on 22, no, 24 different town services. Uh, we also run things from for the town offices and that sort of things and that's about 12 different services that are run through that um we deliver to about 860 homes i think and we have added four regular contributors beyond the um the um the four of us that work on the newsletter and um, and a few other ones, but four regularly. And we have 12 unique advertisers that have started since we started doing advertising in September. And um, currently the printing is all done in-house. Uh, initially when we started looking at doing the newsletter, uh, we looked at potentially doing it out of house and it was very cost prohibitive of about $1,800 an issue, which would not work. Um, wow. So we do it in house. Uh, the color copier that we use belongs to Louise. It's an older model, but um, uh, she runs the color copy or ones and the other ones are run through the town. And, um, and Everyone that we that we hear from is always very excited and encouraged by the newsletter. And every issue we start seem to pick up more uh, um, interest in both the town um, reporting side as well as sort of the short stories, poetry, pictures, those kind of things. So. We're very encouraged and we look forward to serving the town going forward. And uh, and that's sort of where we are now. I'll go into a shop somewhere just all over the county and people will say, oh, I saw a copy of your newsletter. Oh, and good. And thrilled with it. You know, I mean, not just, you know, not just here, not just bakers. I mean, you know, but all over. Great. It's traveling. Yay. That's that's what I love to hear. I, I mean, I was really like when they when the church stopped producing the newsletter, I was really, really glad to see that someone else stepped up to produce the town newsletter because that was like something I've always like appreciated and loved about, you know, living in Conway. Oh, I, I am so thrilled. And everyone that contributes to its creation we've just we've hit our stride and every every uh issue seems to get i don't know how louise pulls off the magic of making it look better and better every issue but somehow it it does <laughs> and uh we couldn't be happier i think it's it's had a good slick look from from day one it really has i think um i i think you know the, the budget is like almost entirely posted um right and yeah, the, the, and then so the, other, that, the, the other thing about you know, about the budget too is that 
the the ad revenues go directly into the town so your budget doesn't reflect any revenue it only reflects right. expenses yeah. but there is revenue but it just isn't on your budget it is and i do think that it will get stronger i think at this point there's maybe somewhere in the three to hundred dollar range somewhere in there but um it's, it hasn't been that long that it's really been uh people are starting to utilize it more. It started out with like one or two ads and then it seems to be increasing and pe we actually had an annual ad recently. So um, I hope, hopefully more businesses will start to see the value in it. And uh, so I, I mean, I just had, when looking at the budget, like there was nothing for FY20, nothing for 21. So, I mean, have we, like, how have you been producing this it was so the church, just the we church. Spent, it's, this is, it's still the church that's been funding this. No, 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 no. no. The the if you if you look at the uh, the second uh, footnote, um, the select board authorized five thousand dollars to be spent on okay. it, right. um, but that's it good. but it all came from the from the town administration budget so far. That's that's, that's one of the reasons why my. Uh, while my office supplies are, are higher um, okay. than so we're what was uh, targeted for. Line. Like we're moving this to its own budget line, basically. Yeah. Yes, this is the first year. And usually committees don't come in to um, tell you about their budgets. Uh, some, some committees do have budgets. But I figured since this was the very first year of the newsletter committee, um, it would be good to uh, to get an introduction and and uh and have a good kickoff for it yeah um, w would it make more sense to put the, the 500 3000 1500 in fy 2021 uh, because that that was what we talked about i mean they as i remember the, this committee came into existence after the budget was all done and they were just sort of funded but right yeah. They can't do that though, because it's it's a new it's a new it's a new numbered yeah. line item. So if if that was in it for twenty, you know that that wouldn't honestly reflect that it formally belonged to another number line item. Uh huh. So I it, see. It, yeah, the, yeah. It couldn't be in the budget twice for twenty twenty one. Because all of these numbers are exactly the same as what we talked about when we gave five thousand dollars. Great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and it, and, it, and right. it was all of our it was all of our hopes that you know that the that the ads you know come in and and um you know reduce the amount that the town spends. But you know, it's for for Erica too. It was it, I think twenty twenty the or twenty nineteen the um the, the the church announced that they were no longer going to be putting out the publication that they had for I don't know how many decades. Um, and it was uh, and. and, and yeah, yeah, and it was, and it was either that the town take it over or the town doesn't have a newsletter, and right. uh, and and we had four volunteers, four incredible volunteers that stepped up, and we decided to fund it. and And I have to tell you that it, um, I, I'm still amazed that after uh, what a, a, a full year and then some, I guess, full, whatever, thirteen months, the um, I still I still haven't heard a single negative comment about the Conway Current, and I know oh. it's just. I, well, I, I why know. Would you? <laughs> why would you? Well, no, no. I mean, you would occasionally hear a gripe about the 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 the, the predecessor. So, um, so I, you know, I, I, I know the current comic current is still young. Give give the town time to form resentments. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I love it. I I I just love the whole idea of it. I'm totally in favor of local, you know, citizen journalism, and you know, just. The way to keep people connected. So, so Alan, how about the finance committee? You, you've you've let us ramble on about it. Yeah, I think it's great, and I have no further questions. <laughs> I I think it's a fine idea, and um, I I like what I've seen, and I assume the um, the potential revenue would be in advertising that there there isn't anything really to date, but definitely, uh, you know. Uh, the visitor used to have plenty of plenty of ads. They were low, very low priced. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's you, 
deserve a good pat on the back. That, that's Cisco and Ebra, two thumbs up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Steve? Is you okay? Any questions? Yeah, fine. It's okay. Good. Okay. Well, we're not voting on these, so so Kate, don't you know? Don't feel bad that we're not you know like approving it. We're we're going to approve them all at once when we get to the end. But this is just our opportunity to have you come in and talk to you and say hi and and and, and have you talk to your budget. Thank you. Can we see the next budget, Tom? What do we have? Uh, Jan. There, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening. Good evening. So uh, my budget doesn't have too many surprises. Um, I do have a couple of small changes from the last submitted. So about the third line item down, you see something that says no project code. Uh, that was actually added last year for some um, fines or fees that may incur uh, just through banking or whatever. So we had put $200 in there. So I'm going to add that in. And, um, and then the subtotal of 17083 it did not include the whole uh, 500 down. So you'll be adding $700 to that for a final total of 77,933. That makes sense for everyone? Yes, to me. Okay. And still down from last year. It's still yeah. down a little bit. We have a little- For this, little this year. Yeah, little decrease in software costs. Um, I expect that to go down even further next year. Um, Are you all done your transition to new software? Um, I've, I've gone two pay periods live and um, it's been successful. It's 99% it's done. There's just some reporting fine tuning we need to finish off to make the reports prettier. But uh, Otherwise, it's going well. No, no problems at all. Do, do, Jan, do, do, do these amounts do they do they reflect the? I know we just we just signed for something a, a couple months ago about a new um, software system or a new vendor or a change. Yeah. So what that you signed up um, for the FurCog, right? The, the right server. So right. this, this software runs off of the FurCog server and, you know, that was no further expense. It was just, it was part of the deal. So the pricing was reduced because we're on a shared server from the beginning. Yes. And it, you know, by doing that, it integrates with all of the accounting software that's also on that server. So that was the idea. So, um, I, the, is is uh, how, how is it uh, your, your, the the salary? How did the salary line item go down? Yeah, that looks like it was a small error. I can't can't really figure out why that was different last year. Um, my worksheets say the same thing. My original worksheets, my original worksheets say sixty one fifty. So, I, I don't know where that came from in twenty twenty one. So there was no there was no change in salaries this year or last year. Yeah, I know about last mm -hmm. year. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you think that'll change? Do you think that's mm -hmm. a mistake? Well, that's what I've been trying to get to. Mm -hmm. But we're not there. We're not ready to talk to that yet. The, okay. Remember, the finance committee wanted to hear from the personnel committee first. Okay. Um, so if there's no other questions on that, we can move on to debt, I guess. Is that next time? Can, can I ask about salaries, oh. wages, and how many employees oh, sure. are covered? How many employees? Just two. There's myself and I have an assistant. Okay. And we're both 18 hours a week. Okay. Very good. 
Great. Should we go into debt now? Alan, you good? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, the debt should have no surprises either. The first item on there, the uh, fire truck note. This is our last payment on that. And then we have the uh, highway garage note in which we're going to um, take 51077 from the budget line item and supplement with 14923 of free cash as we planned on last year. And then there's separate line items for the interest. Uh, the short-term interest includes um, some money if I needed to borrow in anticipation of revenue. And it also includes a small amount for new debt if we should need anything. That would be just a small loan, like a state house loan type thing. So I could reduce that by 1100 if we feel like we're not going to be borrowing for anything. I mean, Can you reduce explain, well, why would you reduce that if you feel like we're not gonna be borrowing for anything? Because we wouldn't need any money to pay for it. So that might be- Borrow pay. money would be because we have a shortage in <coughs> collection of property taxes, right, Jim? Uh, right. So, so we make we up for it by 14% interest as the revenue, right? <clears throat> yeah. I, I'd say leave it in. I mean, I, you know. It is a, it's a nice safety net. Yeah, and if we don't, right. if we don't borrow, then we it'll, it'll just get returned. I mean, you won't spend right. it. Right, right. Interesting, interesting. The tax collections right now, though, are almost the same as they were last year, right? Yes, it's coming in nicely. In fact, I, I'm getting um, just in the last month a, a lot of uh, a lot of tax title payments for properties that have not been paid for a couple of years. That all of a sudden they're selling and the banks are paying off. So I got one in the fifty-one thousand dollars. Woohoo! So is there a lot of sales in town? There's a couple, yeah, ah. yeah. Um, there's there's two abandoned well homes that were you know on bank foreclosure that have been abandoned for a while. Two of them have sold just this <laughs> last few months, so that was good. And then right. the bank pay you? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Any questions on debt? How about you, Alan? You good? No, no I didn't. I have I, I have no questions, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. When, when I did, when I saw this, I, I did, um, I, I did stop the fire chief because I just, I saw that the, the fire truck knew, and I just asked him if there's any plans to ever put in in the near future for another fire truck, and um, mm. and he did, he did say that um, that our oldest vehicle is still way over a decade before it gets replaced. He's on a 25 year cycle. So there's like over a decade before there'll be another request for a fire vehicle. So enjoy it while it's paid for, I guess. <laughs> well, we saved up a long time before we bought that truck. Yep. So. Yeah. And that, you know, there, there might be, so if we're going to start doing that, it's, we could do it just a little bit at a time now. Yeah. Knowing that, knowing that it's 10, 15 years before it's needed. Are we going to hear about that from the capital budgeting uh, presentation? I doubt. I don't know um, who's on. Who's on it? Uh, uh, me. Oh, there you go. I think we're so next there, week. So yeah, so there's an idea actually to self-fund it in drips and drabs over a long period of time. Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm not, I'm not sure if we had. If anyway, I'll, uh, I'll I'll look and see what we have for the fire truck. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so that's it for our budget then this, uh, this week. Oh, no, we've got employee benefits up. Oh, oh. Yeah. We're oh, I got one more. You're right. Jan's yeah. still up. Sorry about that. That's okay. So the first item on there, Franklin County Retirement. This is uh, money that we pay towards funding the future retirement liabilities. 
So we're assessed every, every year based on the, the number of employees and the salaries that we have, and it's distributed throughout Franklin County so that we all participate in that funding. Um, and so I don't really have much of a choice on that one. That's just given to us by Franklin County Retirement. Unemployment insurance, I estimate by taking a, um, a half year projection and looking forward to next year. I, we have a pretty low rate now of 0.01% and I usually estimate that's gonna go up. So I, I increase the second half of the year to by a couple of 0.0 one percentages. So um, group health. Wait, can I, can I ask about the unemployment insurance or do you want to keep oh, going sure. and do the whole thing? You no, do, no, no, go ahead. Thing. No, I like, so, I like individual so, so we are self-funded in this regard, right? In the unemployment well, insurance? Well, yeah, it's called insurance. So um, right. we, we pay a percentage of the gross earnings and then um, we're covered that the unemployment division pays our, our laid off employees. Right, and it's but are the other three the other three towns in Frontier all have for you know insurance companies that they pay policies on, right? No, um, no, not for unemployment. Not for unemployment. No, you have to pay state unemployment tax. Right. There's two ways in which you can pay it: you can pay directly based on your claims, or you can pay a percentage of your earnings, and then you know you're insured basically. And we choose, we choose the second option. So, I mean, I, I'm I just, when, when, because Frontier, we were, do, we're doing the budget, we were trying, we we're fleshing out worst case scenarios, because you don't, you, just to be ready in case the governor's budget, you know, does this dirty in one way or another. And, and um, the, the it, it, what to do about layoffs and every, and whether or not, you know, what the financial impact and, and there, and every, and the, they were telling me that for Conway, it's different than the other three towns with, with regard to, to laying people off, that it would. Well, it is a little bit different because if we, uh, if we had a significant layoff, we wouldn't feel the effects of it for another at least half year, maybe, maybe closer to a year, depending on the date of that, because our, our, the rate changes in January and it's for an entire year. So if next month we wrote, laid off half of our employees, we wouldn't be affected until the next calendar year. All right, maybe that makes but, sense. You know, if you play, if you pay per employee, you're affected right away. And that's different than I'm the other towns. Guessing they pay per employee. The other towns do it differently. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, for the other towns, it would be um, a, a more severe financial impact than for us, is what they said. Hmm. Um, but I mean, we're not planning, we're just doing responsible budget worst case stuff. It's not what we're planning on doing. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, okay. this, I, I like this option myself. It gives us a little more time to um, react if there should be any major Interesting. Layers. Interesting. Okay. Well, it, you know, it also goes the same, same way on the, on the following end. So if you did have a few layoffs and you had an increased rate, you won't see a drop in your rate for another year. So it goes the same way on the other end. But we've been very fortunate to have very few claims. Um, that being said, probably most of you know we've been inundated with uh, fraudulent claims. So um, I've, spent, I've spent a lot of time filling out surveys, notifying employees and so forth about fraudulent claims. Yeah. Are these fraudulent claims like that are filed on behalf of town employees? Yes. So we got numbers. a hold of social security numbers and it's hap happening across the country actually. Yeah, um, I know, I, yeah, I know. I, I mean, it's happened at my, at my work as well. Um, yeah. So somebody got uh, social security numbers and is filing fraudulent claims. So it means that every time a claim comes across and there have been a lot, um, since COVID started. Every time a claim comes across, we have to do an investigation and contact the employee, find out if they actually did it. And if they didn't, then I have to file a fraudulent claim report. The, the unemployment office is not very quick about rejecting these claims. So I get further questionnaires about their earnings and so forth. In fact, 
there was a fraudulent claim on myself and I even got a debit card in the mail. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so do you, do you, can wow. you catch who's doing this? No, they, I, as far as I know, they haven't figured out who's doing it yet, but, oh. but and, uh, they have slowed down. I'm, I'm not sure why, but it's like slowed damn down. email. Jeez. Yeah. Russians. Russians. <laughs> <laughs> so can we move on to group health insurance? You ready? Yeah. yeah. Sorry for the detour. No, no, no problem. <laughs> so uh, you will see there's a small decrease, uh, comparatively speaking, in uh, group health insurance. And that, I really can't explain why I take a snapshot of January and all of the um, policies we have. And I add on a couple more for safety net and that's my number. So it's served me pretty well, although last year I did run a little short because we had a few un unexpected additions. This year, I think we're gonna be doing pretty well. And so next year, I don't know, maybe we have a few less employees due to COVID. I'm not really sure. Yeah. The numbers, the numbers changed a little bit. I do, I do analysis for uh, town and school employees and you know, we went down by, it doesn't take much to change the numbers like they have this year. So we went down by one uh, single plan for the town. Mm -hmm. We went down by two single plans for the school and up by one family plan for the school. So, you know, one family plan is about $15,000 for the town. So, you know, obviously just a couple of them make a big difference. Yeah. So we don't have our FY22 rate for insurance yet. So I build in a 3% increase. Phil, maybe you have some insight into rates. You always seem to know first. No, that's probably pretty reasonable. I was, that's, that's, I, I was told, I was told two, two to three. Mm -hmm. So we have our meeting on uh, the 29th. So that's coming right up when we should vote on uh, what the rates are going to be. And then I will be updating that figure based on that. Group life insurance stayed the same. Uh, Medicare and Social Security, we don't do Social Security, but Medicare is roughly the same. Just took a January snapshot and try and guesstimate. And for a total of 721,557. Great. Jan, we're still exempt from the Family Medical Leave Act as a small town, right? You mean contributing to and paying for it? Yes. Yes. Thank you. We're exempt from it, but we pretty much do it. I mean. We do. <laughs> I mean that you know it's the same thing with the with the schools, right? I mean, but we we have it in our policy that we're going to do it anyway because. Well, uh, well, we don't we don't pay for all family medical leave, but we do have a pretty good um, you know amount of sick days given. So if an employee doesn't use <coughs> sick days and they have quite a few of them, then they yeah. should be able to at least have a short term uh, payment for themselves. And, and and this was a year. Uh, this was a year. This was a year where, where the school the schools loosened their and um, and made it made the FMLA thing more comprehensive because we really wanted to disincentive people from coming into work sick. Um, so we thought it was worthwhile. It seemed to have been since there's been no school transmissions. We also have not accepted the new state. FMLA um, extended leave. I don't know of any municipality that has. It is optional for cities and towns, uh, mandatory for everybody else. Uh, ultimately, this will make towns less competitive. Uh, so it's something to think about for the long term. But it's, it's a much more extended leave. And my bet is we would have to include some funding for temporary replacements, uh, which may not be able, if it was a professional uh, person who left, uh, the replacement might end up costing us more than we have in salary for the existing employees. So we might have to consider a fund for, uh, uh, for, for paying for a replacement if we did adopt the mass 
extended FMLA leave. Uh, again, I don't know of any city or town that's done it so far, but if we want to stay competitive with the private sector, ultimately I think that's that's the way we're going to have to go. Yeah, well, uh, every school in the state has I, I, already. I know, and, and it's interesting that you brought this up because this is the one issue that our unions were using sort of as leverage in the uh, school remote versus the school hybrid plan. And um, that, that, the, that there were so many uh, staff members that were eligible for the FMLA extended thing that that created leverage, um, uh, you know, to, to, to take our time because we, if all of them would have taken that uh, they, we wouldn't have been able to do live instruction. So it's, it's sort of a, it, it's, it's definitely um, uh, an, a pro-employee uh, measure for sure. Any more questions for Dan? I have a question, uh, OPED, is that, where does that show up on our uh, huh. county code section, uh, Dan, you know? Or Tom Hutchinson? Good question. It's not part of our operating budget. We we do have an OPEB account. Um, there's very little in it at this point. So it's it's part of our overall town balance sheet, but it's not part of our operating budget. It's funded through usually through a special article. Um, and you know, either ten or twenty thousand a year, depending on how how uh, flush we're feeling, and so I, you know, there's there's definitely less than a hundred thousand in there now. I think there may be fifty or sixty thousand in there now. But again, that's not part of the operating budget. Right. Thank you. Did, I have another you, question. Why have you both, Jan and you here, Tom? The uh, audit for uh, fiscal year twenty or nineteen or twenty nineteen, right? Do you know when the uh, final draft release will be? It will be coming very soon. It's me that's holding it up at this point. I have some numbers to go over before I give the go ahead for the draft. And I expect I'll have that done very soon. Maybe we can have you back to, if there, uh, will, there be any, will they do a, a findings or management discussion? Maybe we can oh, have yes. you back. We can have you back maybe to discuss if there's any particulars. Yes, absolutely. I'll have it to you Thank as you. soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jan or Tom, do you have any recollection of what the the auditor last the last time we had an audit what they said about the OPEB and um, what the where we were at with that? Because I I, I know in the, the my capacity as the school OPEB person, we we do what the auditor says about that, um, and that's pretty much the incentive to do anything. So, um. Tom, do you want to speak to that? Well, you know, I, I try to put uh, some substantial amount into it each year. Our total OPEB liability is somewhere in the order of one and a half million dollars. That's an awful lot of money for a small town to tie up. The, the argument for, for small towns without a lot of liability not putting a lot of money into OPEB is that it represents our, our annual expense represents somewhere on the order of half a percent of our operating budget. So if, if we can't spend half a percent of our operating budget, we are in, in, in dire straits. Um, so that, that is, it, it's not been felt that that's a, um, on the local level, that that's really a driving fiscal issue. Unfortunately, it's now re we're now required to carry it on our balance books you know, we, 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 we have to fix the roads, too, and keep them in repair, uh, but we're not required to fund our, uh, our road repair 30 years out in, a, in a, essentially a stabilization fund. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it is, in a way, uh, a different situation for small towns with a very small effect um, than it is for some of the larger towns. I think Worcester was something like $300 million in debt to its pension fund. So, and, and that was after the, uh, the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, which um, really sparked 
um, the reform of uh, accounting in this area. Uh, it is definitely um, a part of any kind of credit rating that we get. It'll probably be about five percent of our credit rating if we uh, if we're doing well with our OPEB. So putting money into it every year and having a plan and a policy to put money into it every year is important and will be uh, if we go out to borrow a large sum of money. Um, until then, the practical consequences aren't much. Uh, but again, if we can show a history of regular uh, contributions along with a policy of regular contributions, I think um, that will help in the long run. <clears throat> Tom, I think you made a very excellent point, and I love the comparison there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the auditors don't hammer us on it. They say we're in really no different position than most other small towns across Massachusetts. So uh, it's not really a big deal to them. My, my thing about this, and I know uh, Tom's probably here, sick of me here saying this, but um, you know, the, the, the uh, this is this is one of those things that eventually we are going to get penalized for being responsible because the it's not just Worcester, the Springfields, the Holyoaks, and there's a lot of small towns too that just have never funded this. And that and if you ask anybody that all the people in Boston say it it's structurally unsound, it's not sustainable the way it is. And there will be a bailout. And at <laughs> some point it, it's unavoidable. And, and, and we're not going to have anything to bail out because we're, we're so responsible. We'll just pay with our taxes for the bailouts of others. And so- We're not, we're not even close to fully funded though. So we're really just making a, a good hearted attempt to have a policy to keep contributing to it. And it shows that we're paying attention to it and not just ignoring it. Yeah, I get so it. I think, I think we get a little pat on the back for that when the banks consider us for debt yeah one of the other small towns one of the other three towns we were in some meeting where one of them mentioned that they were fully funded for their opeb oh i find that hard to believe is that true i was shocked uh that's that's someone that doesn't know what opeb is <laughs> i would think so yeah last year i thought that we funded opeb out of the opeb account that's we we actually spent out of our opeb account for our yeah we did well, that, was, that was the plan. That was a plan. I, I don't think we're actually going to have to do it. Yeah. I think that was 10,000 we put out of last year. Yeah. It seemed funny. No, we put 10,000 in and we voted, Tom, was it 25, 26,000 out? <laughs> I have to check the notes from last year. Yeah. Yeah. We, we voted to expend our retirement. Uh, expenses out of it, which is usually it was uh, thirty-eight thousand. Thirty-eight thousand. Thank you. So thirty-eight thousand out of the trust fund and ten thousand into it. But but I don't think we're going to have to actually do that if we don't want to, and and so we have to figure out what we want to do with that because I think our budget will be enough. We didn't reduce the budget when we voted that OPEB money. So we had voted the budget money and we voted the OPEB money. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. So our budget will likely be able to carry it and, um, and we won't have to spend the OPEB money. I, I have a wild and crazy theory that so far no one I've spoken to agrees with, um, <laughs> but I don't think it's... I don't think it's it's really ever been tried. I think that if we established a very long-term pattern, say over 10 years, of paying our other post-employment benefits, our retiree health care, through our OPEB trust fund, then we would be demonstrating that our method of doing it was in fact sustainable, where we build it up to a certain point, we pay out of it, and we, we keep in it maybe three or four years worth of, of future OPEB expenses to tide us over any time when our operating budget might, might dip down. Um, and, and I think that would go, I think that, that 
that would be a strategy that a credit rating agency would look at and say, yeah, we get it. You're, you're in a good situation. You don't want to tie up a lot of your funds. You want to keep your taxes low. You're acting responsibly. And who knows, we might get an extra point on our, on our credit rating report for that. So um, we can talk about, I guess, in the future, how you, how you would tend to fund it and then what, what returns are on it. You have to make all kinds of actuarial assumptions. If you can point to any examples out there of towns that have done it, Tom, I'd say I'd like to take just a look at it for anything for uh, reverse intellectual curiosity purposes. You know, pension accounting and all that is really complex. There I think this is one of those situations where, where Conway could take great pleasure in being the first town to do it. I think great, ple great pleasure might be overstating it, but. Uh, yeah, it might cost us a bit to manage it too. I mean, you know, it require oversight, but whatever. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's actually, I have no further questions on the employee benefits. Actually an interesting idea though. So is there anything else on the finance committee joint meeting that we need to do? I think that's it. Good. That's it, as far as I know. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everybody. Alan, Alan, Roy, Steve. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Jan, thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. You're good night. welcome. Good night. Good night, Malika. My, Jan, that was for you. This uh, we changed. I changed paintings for you, Jan. That was. That's I my, like that's, it. That's Toriador. That's Toriador. <laughs> Very nice. So, Tom, are there any items unanticipated? Uh, I do not have any. You've had some lately, so that's good. Do you have an update? Yes, I do. Um, in committee news, I might have mentioned this earlier, but uh, I don't think you'll see. I don't think it would have much of an effect. Um, I was asked last week to see if the personnel committee would like to make a recommendation regarding staff raises. Uh, I posed the question to the committee and asked whether they would like to have a meeting regarding the issue, and both of the current members replied that they believed it was a policy issue for the select board, not a personnel issue as such. In other committee news, I have both phoned and emailed Pat Lynch to invite her to a select board meeting to discuss Lynn Hanley's letter, I have not yet heard back from her. Don't worry, all the in rest department. Of Regarding her attendance at a select board meeting, I will say. Yes, there's, um, there's been plenty of discussion. In departmental news, uh, I have looked at the audit numbers again based on a conversation with the treasurer collector. Uh, we need to cover the triennial single audit at the school, which is about $2,500, and $15,000 for the FY 2020 audit. We have $32,602 in the account now, uh, which will cover that easily. The next audit will be for our fiscal year 2022, uh, and the audit will occur in 2023, so we don't need to include that in this year's budget and should have the remainder of the account, of the account about $15,102. We have an agreement with Roselli Clark and Associates to have that next audit done for $15,000, so that should be set. Uh, that said, after that agreement expires, I would advocate for the town to consider having another auditor for a while, just to have a fresh set of eyes on the town's finances as a whole. And uh, another item, I've been working with Jason Silverman regarding the agreement he has with the town to hay the South River Meadow. That agreement is expiring, and I asked him to speak with the other hay farmers in town to see if anyone else wanted to share the public resource. He is doing so, and we may have a proposed revised agreement for you within the next month or so. 
And finally, I um, just got an indication. Is it appropriate for, for Jason to do it, do it all? Uh, I think when, when we, it over, we, I thought we need to favor to us, it's not to him. It's of mutual benefit, but it's a public resource. So uh, we need a manner of uh, discerning whether it's being uh, allowed to be used equitably. And I believe that Jason is doing that. And the agreement we come up with will reflect his efforts to make sure that um, uh, all the people who might want to hay that field um, have had an opportunity uh, to um, tell him whether or not they they want to. Well, uh, haying that field involves fertilizing it and maybe reseeding no. it now and then, and y you know it. it it's not clear to me that it's easy to do it in a shared way. Uh, I'm not suggesting that it would be shared in that way. Uh, I believe the agreement that he brings to you will account for uh, what needs to be uh, to be arranged. Okay. Um, and finally. I just got an indication of coming insurance figures. Uh, some categories are probably going up. This was at the MMA meeting. Uh, some, fig some categories are, are going up substantially for um, the majority of the towns that they serve, so uh, the average is going up. Um, but we don't have figures for Conway yet. Um, uh, my bet is that we could end up fairly close to being level funded, which would be great. And that's all I have. Tom, is there, Tom, did you ask in there about um, discounts for body cams? Yes, I did. And unfortunately, we do not get discounts for body cams. Okay, thanks. Good to know. So any concerns of the selectmen? Uh, I have none. No, uh, nothing I haven't talked about already, I suppose. <laughs> you good, Erica? Okay. Uh, any mail? I, I, I don't have any mail. Nope. Nope. Uh, um, well, uh, we, we got an email from the select board down in Deerfield due to the recorder article and it was you know about no uh, um bob we actually got that i think yeah. before that article well we were going to be asked before that article came out that's an ongoing concern that we should probably take up um after we've gotten some um further information sure I, but i just for, you know, from our own it, people it it, it wasn't an email that we got and and we basically said, Wait, did, did gonna, it go? Did it go just to you, Bob, or, or was it for the whole? Did it go just to you, or I don't recall. Was was it addressed to the select board? I, I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I must have. Okay. I so I think it's, it's not we, something that, yeah. that we're going to pursue until we have more information. That's all I wanted to say. It's another 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 uh, senior center center item that we can yeah. take up. Yeah. And and. Yeah. Bob and I were were reached out to initially. Yeah, me um, me too. Me too. When I when I encountered the director yeah. of the Deerfield Center, and uh, and I said, put it in writing. So that might fit. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't really have a concern, but as a I just sort of like a point of clarification. And I mean, given the article in the recorder, and then the email that we had you know, concerned that we had this discussion without consulting the appropriate people. I mean, I just it's sort of like a point of clarification. I mean, is that it, it, I felt like it was entirely appropriate, the conversation that we had at our last meeting. Um, and I thought we were very clear that we didn't have all the information in front of us. So, um, you know, kind of as a newcomer to this process, I just, uh, 
that I guess was, I just would appreciate a little more clarification about like, you know, like if we're to discuss something that comes before us kind of at the last minute, do we always have to have, you know, like, is Perfect. there something that we should just like, as a matter of course, not ever take up, you know, no. because, you know, that, yeah, you, was, have, right? you know, because <laughs> we know thinking, that like, yes, there are other people that we should consult and yet it's something that's come before the board. I was thinking about this exact same issue about the whole, you know, how much do you discuss when you admit that you don't know what you're talking about? And, right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and, and what, what I was thinking at the time is that, you know, last, last year or the year before there was um, somebody had written in and the select board had just immediately said, you know, Oh, go, go to X, you know, here, to, here, Tom is give this to X department head and have them come up with an answer. And that was the entire discussion. And, and the person like sort of upbraided me about, you know, Hey, you know, I get that you wanted you know, me to talk to the department head, but how about finding out, you know, what the, you know, what the select board knows, what the select board thinks about it, what the select, you know, what you don't know, give me some context to talk to who I'm supposed to talk about. And, uh, you know, just, just be honest, you know, be trained, you know, whatever. And so, so, uh, so, so th those words were going through my head when I was just sort of, well, we don't really know anything, but Hey, here's what somebody told me. And, uh, you know, and it's just one of those things. This has been the year where no matter what you do, you, you, people are- <laughs> You can't do anything right. Yeah, yeah, this is just another example for me of just like something mm -hmm. where the same exact thing, you know, one way somebody criticizes you, the next way somebody finds fault with you. To, to yeah. me, it's an example that we're not allowed to talk to each other outside the meeting and, and, and the meeting is public and we may say, you know- Well, no, it wasn't even a question of that. I mean, it was, it was something that we were like discussing in a public meeting that someone felt like we shouldn't have even discussed at all in a public meeting. Without, I you know, think the, the the safest thing is if if there's something that you think you want to discuss, and and there's not no urgency to it, uh, to put it on the next agenda. Just okay, all right. So I guess that's the, that's the clarification I was looking for. Like, if there's any concern that like we don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> table it for next time. Well, and I, and I do know that that right when we started out with that discussion, Tom, in his gentle way, did try to like say to us, "Hey, let's just let's just wait on this." Um, and you know, he he did he did try to do that. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But uh, you know, I, so I was just I don't know, I don't know. I'm sure the next person, if we decide not to talk about it in the future when that comes up, I'm sure the next person will say, "Hey, you know, Jesus, let me know what you're thinking just a little bit," you know. How about well, I mean, I, I feel like I can always, I like, I'm, I can play the newcomer card. Like, this is all just a new learning experience to me because this is like the first time I've ever done this before. So, um, I'm like, I'm happy to have like all of yours. Like, you've all been at this for much longer, so I appreciate your um, insight. <laughs> How about select board announcement? No. Then our next meeting no. is. February 1st, 6 p.m. by June. Sounds okay. good. I'll, uh, Thank do we adjourn the meeting? Yep. I, yep. Yes. We all adjourn. Very Thank good. You. Thank you very much. See you all in a week. Thank you.